Hello friends, welcome to PC Rabbit. Welcome to a series on GMeter. In the last session, we saw that how to read data from an external file using the Bean Shell scripting. In a similar manner, today we can see that how to write data to an external file using Bean Shell scripting. So let us begin by opening the GMeter console and adding a thread group as well as an HTTP request first. So this is our GMeter console. So let's quickly add a thread group. And we will add an HTTP request to this. Okay. So Beanshell is a scripting language uh, developed in Java and it can dynamically execute the standard Java syntax. Hence, we are going to use Java over here. So we can also add, so for using Java, we'll add a post processor named as Beanshell post processor and we'll write the code in here. And also we can add a listener. So we'll add a listener to see our executes and results. Okay, so first of all, let us copy the script and then see it uh, particularly line by line. So I have copied the script in here. Now we'll go to the initial post processor and we'll write the script. So the script goes something like this. So we are writing a file, we are writing the script to write the data to file. So here we are used the file class from Java and we have created object of type file and that uh, this will be used to tell jmeter where the test result file is located uh, in which we need to write the results so first of all let's uh, so we have to give the location in here so first of all let's create a excel file in which we'll write the result so let's be it blank and we'll save it as so we'll save it on the desktop itself so we'll call it a test result and we will select the format as csv comma delimited csv file so we'll be saving it and now let's close this first so here is the csv file in which we want to write the result so let's give the path of that file in our script we'll take the path and we have to write the path in here and we'll write test result dot csv also we have to insert same this backslash okay so path is done so in order to write data to this file we need to use one more class from java which is the file writer class and we'll again create an object for it and we'll pass the file object created earlier that is this f to this file writer so we have passed the object of this file to this file writer as both these class reside inside the Java IO package, we have imported the Java IO package in here. Now uh, we have also used one more class that is the buffered writer in here, and we have passed the file writer object to the buffered writer. So this object is being passed in here to buffered writer. We have used buffered writer in here because it uses internal buffer to write to the file, and it's helpful when there are multiple write operations to be performed on that file. So whenever there are multiple writes or options, operations that would need to be performed, buffer writer will be handy for us. Now, in the below logic, we have fed the response code using a variable priv. So you can see this priv is here in the script variable. And so you know, we will use priv when we, when we are working on the previous response. So we will always use priv. So wherever we are using the priv variable, it will always act upon the previous sampler result. So we are acting upon this sampler result. So whatever, uh, let's suppose we give this google.com and once this request is uh, executed, we'll get the response code. So if you want to press that, we are doing it with the help of priv variable. So, and we'll store that uh, response in a particular variable name as rc. And now after that, we have implemented the if-else logic. So if rc equals to 200, then we'll write to the file that the test has passed or else we'll write the test has failed. So if we get any other code other than 200, then it will the script will write test has failed to your file. Otherwise it will write test has passed. And then afterwards we have closed the buffer writer object as well as the file writer object. So now, once our script is running ready so let us run the script and we can see the results so 
let's run it. So first clear out any previous result if any. And let's run it. So it will ask to save. You can save or you can ignore this. So I'm not saving it right now. And in you can in here you can see the HTTP request was executed and the request went to the Google server and we got the particular response. So if you want to see the response, you can also choose browser in here. So it will take some time to load. And it will exactly load the browser content. So this request has been successful. So let's change it to text again. Okay. And now in here, if you can see the response code that you have got is 200. So as for our script, so if RC equals to 200, then we should write test as passed to our Excel sheet. So let us open our Excel sheet and we can see what result has been passed. And you can see test has passed has been printed in the sheet. So now let us see that if we fail this request, what is getting printed? So it should work in vice versa. So test has failed should we get print. So now the HTTP request uh, server URL, we have properly made it wrong. And we'll run this again. So let's clear out any result. And it will see the HTTP request went to www.google. So .com was missing, so it was not successful. And in the sample result, so here response code, we didn't get any response code. So now if you can close this once and again open it. Okay, so this was open, that's why it couldn't write to it. So let us quickly run this request again. Yeah, and now it is failing. So we should get the failed response in that file. And yeah, you can see it has printed test has failed because the HTTP request uh, had failed. Uh, so in this way, can use this bean shell scripting also to insert values or result into external file. Hope you have liked this content and do let us know about it by posting all your questions, suggestions in the comment section below. So see you soon with more geometry related content. Until then, have a great time. Thank you.